so good morning to uh, and all uh, today we'll be discussing about the privacy in the digital age which is actually a critical uh, topic in the current scenario uh, before we start uh, you know i will just ask one question uh, is your information safe online we use mobile we use uh, uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, tablets we use uh, computers and uh, we might be having more than one email address with us you know we have multiple social media profiles we have uh, you know uh, multiple social media applications. uh which includes whatsapp facebook instagram so uh things which we post uh and um, there's an echo i guess okay, i'll check again so that uh we post a lot of information online uh you no know, uh as post as uh, our personal information uh in the profile area so my question was is this information safe so consider following scenario where you go for a uh, shopping in a mall and uh, you purchase some items from uh, any shop uh, whether it's a clothing store or a you know any other electronic store nowadays they ask for a, a phone number or an email address and uh, you know you pay the amount and sometimes what happens is that if you are already registered in their uh, uh, database uh, they will confirm your name once and once you purchase the item you get some points or uh, you know based on the uh, purchased value you get some discounts so who handles this information and where is this stored and what is it used for any idea so uh, mm -hmm. most of the time we think that okay i am getting some points so you no know, to map the points they are storing the data no it's not just for uh, mapping the points it's also for something called personalized advertisement so they will have a collection of the information on what you have purchased before and what you are purchasing now so this will correlate and the advertisements that comes to you from their uh, store will be much more personalized to you say for example if you have purchased uh, 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 jeans uh, if you have purchased a t-shirt so they know that you are into more of a casual wear than a formal wear so when the next time uh, when they have offers on casual wear they pinpoint you to target specific ads related to casual wear for you so this type of analysis is done through your data right so the question is who handles and how they are doing it so consider another scenario as well you met a friend and uh, this might be happening a lot these days so you met a friend or you know you are discussing something all of a sudden uh, you know uh, the talk went to food and you are suggesting him okay macha uh, you go here there will be nice biryani in this particular uh, hotel and immediately you will get a message from uh, you know uh, the food delivering apps that you know 35% off on this particular shop if not that at that moment in some time you will get that particular shop uh, you know uh, specific offers in that particular applications so that means uh, you know there are some personalized ads but our concern was as a cyber security uh, expert our concern was so in order to deliver these uh, you know applications the phone has to be constantly observing our conversations so is it a personalized ad at the best or it's a privacy privacy at its risk so uh, how many of you uh, uh, how many of you uh, seen the apple iphones these days so they don't have uh, so i am using a apple iphone so uh, they don't have any uh, touch uh, uh, i mean uh, so you have face recognition uh, application or a pin number so if you have enabled face recognition what happens is that when you keep the phone idle you can see that it constantly checks for the uh, face okay so the moment i open the um, mobile phone in front of me it identifies my face so it means that it is actually searching for the particular face all the time that means the camera is active all the time right so this type of concerns comes into uh, the picture when we talk about privacy so what exactly is privacy so privacy is the uh, uh, the right of an individual to keep their information or uh, the data 
confidential and personal and to protect from unauthorized use. Say, for example, your name, your uh, email, your date of birth. So these are called personally identifiable information. Say, for example, I am giving just a name. Okay, I'm giving my name is Ajit. That's it. If you are sharing this, okay, this is one guy called Ajit. But with that particular name, can he pinpoint me? No, right? There is something else that should be coming into the picture. Say, for example, this acts as a uh, key. So there is something else. For example, uh, my date of birth. So Ajit is born on this particular date. So that maps, right? So Ajit, date of birth and an email. So that gives a much more pinpointed uh, targeting. So this is called personally identifiable information or PII data, which is very critical in the uh, information age. Okay. So privacy is the right of individual to keep this particular data safe from unauthorized access. So just a historical uh, perspective. So long back when uh, the, before the age of internet, we used to write letters or diaries. So these are all personal reflections, whatever my feelings or particular day or my feelings towards one particular person, I'll write it in a letter and give it to them, right? So diaries also. So we, we keep this particular information very safe. Okay, I keep my personal diary very safe so that no one else can uh, can get an access to my personal life. Similarly, letters. I keep uh, I uh, and uh, I am expecting that only the particular person who is intended to read the letter is able to read the particular letter and no one else has access to that. So this were a lot of, uh, you know, uh, we keep it under lock, you know, for privacy, uh, you know, maintaining privacy, right? And then comes the telecommunication era. So we have a lot of phones at that time. So what happens is that there is a concern of tapping of the particular phone call. So they were using lines, unlike the wireless signals, they were using lines. So someone can connect a, another line and, you know, tap the phone. That is called phone tapping, uh, phone tapping or freaking attacks. Okay, so they can be you know business competitors. Uh, you know there can be uh, government uh, entities who we, who are using, or sometimes even hackers who wants to eavesdrop our phone call. Now the modern era comes up, right? It's uh, you know now the emails and uh, digital communication. We have WhatsApp, we have uh, Facebook, we have Telegram. We have uh, normal Android messaging applications, iOS messaging applications. So these messaging applications uh, use internet to communicate. And the rise of the internet gave birth to hackers. So each and every time you know, we send a mail, uh, we, we are at the risk of getting hacked, right? The information that we transmit over the internet is at the risk of getting hacked if we are not configured properly. So the modern challenges in privacy the explosion of data generation. Uh, an individual, can you imagine how much data you are generating at one particular uh, day? Enormous. Say, for example, you uh, wake up, okay? Then general scenario, I'm saying, you wake up. The first thing that we do in normal life is take my phone. I'll just check Instagram or Facebook, okay? I'll check the post of my friends or the, some news, okay? The each and every click is a data that we are sending. Say, for example, uh, my po uh, my one, one of my friend posted he got a new uh, mobile, right? I liked it. So when we like it, we are actually liking one post, right? But for the uh, platform, it is actually he is liking one person's uh, post. So he is acquainted to that person, right? Then the next thing. He liked the post of a mobile phone. So he must be interested in the mobile technology. So these are the informations that can be collected, right? So each and every click, each and every scroll that we do, everything generates a data. And uh, uh, this data, this enormous data has to be processed because uh, there might be millions of people at the, in the world who will be clicking at that particular time, okay? So to process, analyze, and to you know, segregate the data, they need huge, uh, you know, infrastructure. So these type of challenges comes into the play. Then uh, pervasive uh, surveillance systems. Government, you know, in some countries, government surveillance each and every activities of the individual. Uh, I don't know how many of you seen the movie called Snowden. It's a very beautiful movie. So there is a project from the U.S. government called Prism, which there is uh, there is a rumor that government is actually uh, tracking each and every 
uh, users data the phone calls the the through the tv so there are a lot of uh, projects similar to this going on in china there is a uh, rumor that uh, uh, government is actually tracking individual users so everything that we browse it is going to the government uh, server then going to the internet so these things happens so uh, the in, uh, in uh, invasive surveillance oh sorry uh, the per uh, pervasive surveillance systems that is in uh, use that is actually a big challenge to the privacy then increased online activities like i told you before from starting of the day to the uh, uh, bedtime till we go to sleep we'll be using the phone how many of you use the phone uh, outside the bedroom no one right most of the time we will be keeping the phone with us during the bedtime as well so this is the uh, uh, increased challenges in the modern uh, world digital world now comes to social media and privacy i used to say uh, to understand an individual's mind at that particular time we don't need to uh, hack into the system we just need to go to whatsapp and see the status if he is sad we will get to know from the post that he uh, you know from the status that he posted on the whatsapp right if he is happy we get to know that so to understand an individual it is more easy than uh, you know uh, before so what i was saying is that we share too much data okay than intended uh, i don't know how many of you have uh, uh, facebook accounts these days more uh, you know most of them uh, have facebook accounts so in the facebook page there is a option for personal information we post date of birth we post family members so imagine a hacker hacking into your account right he uh, he goes to your facebook profile page and uh, he gets the data you have entered date of birth you have entered the family details your father your mother uh, your brother your sister and uh, you know so i can collect anything uh, my likes uh, my dislikes uh, the post i have uh, you no know, shared my house details i have taken a photo of my house and posted this is my house previously it will be there right it's not deleting so this data is there and i can actually uh, use this for malicious activities i can actually stalk you i can actually post uh, uh, i can create a different uh, facebook account uh, and in on your name so that is called identity theft so for these uh, activities i require a lot of data from your side which is available online so the point is that we share too much data in the uh, social media nowadays uh, we have the you no know, uh, smart uh, bands uh, smart watches so each and every uh, thing that we do they encourage us to post on facebook or uh, linkedin or uh, instagram so for example i walked uh, you know uh, 20000 uh, uh, steps today uh, today that's an achievement for them and they ask us to post their uh, post their data in the online so that other users will be interested and buy the product but the problem is that you know we are actually giving a way too much data for them right why they want to post my uh, step counts okay like uh, why they why they want to post my blood pressure at that time why they want to post my heartbeat at that time okay so it's kind of a uh, uh, you know uh, they are creating an ecosystem uh, within the devices or within the platforms so that they can share the data each other right so one more thing i always say is that uh, say for example when you get something for free okay always may uh, always think that okay when something is free you are the product say for example facebook is free how they generate income they generate income via advertisements they share our details to the advertisers like uh, this is a guy of 29 years old this is a guy of uh, you know uh, 40 years old he is interested in these things he is a uh, uh, working professional he is working in a cyber security domain so the advertisements will be mapped to our Uh, interest say for example i uh, like lot of food pictures so my ads will be more of a uh, hotels uh, or more of a uh, uh, you know uh, uh, ice cream ice creams so the products that they sell on food site so that that kind of uh, advertisements the personalized advertisement or targeted marketing is possible in the platforms so there are someone called data brokers so who are they data brokers are nothing uh, they uh, actually uh, uh, collects the data from these platforms they store it they process it and they give to uh, whoever is uh, needing the data so for example um, 
you went to an educational fair okay there are a lot of uh, colleges there are a lot of uh, mm, uh, consultancies that will come into the educational fair you give their uh, give the names and uh, you know uh, numbers to them right so when you pass your uh, ug and go to uh, at that time of uh, you know joining the pg time you will get a lot of calls from n number of consultancies how do they do that they share your data with multiple colleges right similarly uh, these people what they do is that they collect uh, the games that you play the details of the games that you play the loyalty cards the loyalty cards are nothing but uh, i told you right when you shop you get some points right these are loyalty cards so these points are details like so what can i get from this point details is how much i purchase okay if i have a huge uh, collection of uh, i mean uh, loyalty points that means i purchase a lot right then the purchase history based on the purchase history they will get to know what type of shopper i am then uh, the data from the public social platforms like facebook instagram whatsapp you know uh, sorry uh, uh, facebook instagram linkedin so these social platforms they share information then uh, publicly available information you go to google and search your name whatever data is coming you will be surprised to know that right so this will be shared to uh, certain stakeholders like based on uh, what you want to uh, uh, get so for example i am a shop uh, cloth merchant right i want to know in this particular locality on this particular age group because my uh, like dress will be trending based on that right so uh, my uh, uh, like uh, i want to know on this particular area how many uh, people are there who are compulsive buyers of the particular clothing type so i can approach a data broker and he gives this data for a price right so here the product is your data right i am the consumer right and there is a data broker in between right so this is the uh, thing that is happening in the industry now coming to another uh, thing is iot internet of things there are a lot of connected devices from your smart watch okay say for example uh, i don't know how many of you have uh, the habit of collecting uh, like buying the digital products from the same company say for example uh, i have an iphone i have a, a macbook okay imagine i also have a apple watch okay so all these are from apple and they are capable of communicating with each other okay samsung also has similar so there is something called apple home as well so apple home is nothing but uh, you know an home automation right there is apple tv is there then uh, apple uh, like uh, laptops apple desktops so what happens is that from the moment you enter the house these devices communicate each other right apple watch has your health data how much time you have uh, you know communicated so it also has the data uh, when you are coming and when you are sleeping so these are communicating to each other to give you a personalized experience right so this means that the more connected devices the uh, data entry point or the collection points are more so last time uh, we had a debate and uh, uh, you know the debate was on topic of uh, how safe the connected devices okay imagine uh, i want to uh, attack one guy okay and uh, there is no way that uh, from his office i can attack him what i can do as a attacker is that i can target one of the device to spread the virus okay nowadays electronic cars are also coming right so i i can actually inject a malicious code in the electronic car okay through one of the system and the car on the way can crash okay this might be a joke or you know this might be an unbelievable thing for you but this is happening in the industry so what happens is that every interconnected network is having a danger of hacking so the way uh, the attackers use the data or the way attackers uh, you know is the challenge here we are not sure which component will be vulnerable right so uh, and one more thing is that i can actually stalk you i can actually get the entire details of what you are where you are go going at what time you are going so all these things are coming up right uh now government surveillance like i told you uh there is global surveillance practice going on for the safety of the nation 
or uh, to attack other nations so i don't know how many of you read the news uh, there was a, a report on chinese balloon that is going in a, a us village okay so the balloon uh, they believe that there is a surveillance uh, equipment attached to that balloon right so what what happens is that when the balloon is moving uh, there are some uh, like uh, uh, access points which will be communicating to the balloon from the ground right it will collect the data from the us and communicate to this balloon which will be sending the data to the chinese people okay so this was the worry and uh, you know so these type of tactics or uh, you know uh, techniques are used by multiple government organizations okay so the government is also watching us right so when you do some uh, you know illegal activities online the dark web everything is uh, come uh, like uh, you know monitored these days right so this also uh, is a challenge for privacy right if any of this data is misused okay okay government is using say for example i am a uh, you know authorized people uh, guy to you know uh, monitor you right but if i collect some data and store it illegally or you know uh, store it for a temporary purpose and this storage device get compromised your data is leaked right so these type of attacks can also happen and it is a challenge for privacy then there should be balance between national security and privacy rights okay i i, I accept there is a national security and you are monitoring but there is a limit of monitoring as well right that means you know uh, i can uh, if i am a government i can i cannot uh, monitor your uh, mobile phone 24 bar uh, 7 right i have a personal privacy right so this is a challenge for privacy then there are solutions and tools for you know uh, uh, preventing uh, uh, privacy breaches or you know uh, attacks against privacy so there is encrypted messaging app telegrams uh, you know signal so uh, these are all uh, 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 like you know encrypted applications right so uh, we cannot uh, okay whatsapp is end to end encrypted that means the data that is stored in the whatsapp cannot be read by whatsapp right but uh what if uh they are actually making uh, another program to read the particular data then again we can't say that right so there are encrypted messaging applications which will be encrypting from end to end on the transfer and the storage also right uh so we call that data at uh, transit data at rest so there are some encrypted applications like that to prevent you know unauthorized access to our data then there is virtual private networks vpn so i don't know how many of you use uh, your mobile phones in uh, railway stations uh, airports there are wifi endpoints right so what happens is that there can be other hackers or you know attackers within the network and they can you know eavesdrop or uh, you know perform man in the middle attacks in the network so man in the middle attacks are nothing but if you are in the network i am also in the network so when you communicate to a particular server when you go to a, a banking site you enter a password i can also get that particular password from your uh device without you knowing that i can also inject some malicious uh, data into your device or the communication that is happening so then there is two factor authentication okay even if i am hacking if there is a two factor authentication i won't be able to access your data right so there are some solutions and techniques as well to prevent attacks some best practices uh you know regularly update your password so sometimes what happens is that there will be data breaches right so there is a website called have i been pwned p w uh, uh, d so p w n d so what happens here is that uh, when you go to this particular website enter your email you will get to know whether your password has been appeared in any of the data breaches okay so you can try that and you know regularly update your password at least uh, you know twice a week or once in a month regularly change your password to a uh, you know much more stronger password don't use previously used passwords or very short passwords yeah so what i was I saying you continue yeah so what yeah. i was saying uh, the the things that we are sharing online should be uh, monitored by ourselves uh, what you are sharing is should be under your control right and uh, don't share uh, too much information say for example it's always good that uh, you are sharing uh, you know uh, you want to share your new house or a new vehicle <laughs> your friends right so when you take a photograph of your vehicle be, be sure that you hide the uh, uh, number okay vehicle number so that your data will not be shared with the public right or you put a privacy accordingly 
because uh, what happens is that i can actually go to you know uh, e parivahan or you know some uh, similar websites and type your uh, you know the particular vehicle number i'll get the name and details of this particular user right similar to that if you are uh, when you are sharing one particular uh, image via email or something what happens is that the image will contain something called metadata right it will uh, have the geolocation of where you have collected the uh, where you have clicked that particular picture so when you when you take a photograph of your house what happens is that if this gets leaked somewhere okay or if it is getting uh, misused somewhere what happens is that this particular photo will have the location of your house i can actually come and you know uh, stalk you at your house so these type of things have happened and the, uh, it, it is actually a possible uh, uh, attack pattern so things should be checked and check privacy settings on applications don't give a uh, you know so most of the uh, uh, like uh, um, money based attacks okay say for example you know you might have heard that you know i gave one uh, you know i got one link when i click my money is lost okay so sometimes what happens is that you might have enabled uh, two factor authentication right say for example there is an application which requests otp for transaction okay so if you give, give otp uh, auto fill option right when you click this particular uh, link what happens is that the otp will come to this particular application and uh, you know you don't need to enter that the otp will be read by the application and give a uh, you know uh, processed right so don't give auto uh, i mean auto submit or auto uh, fill of the otps for this application sms access that is a major thing don't give sms access to the applications right so manually enter the otp i know it's tough sometimes but it is actually the safest way okay and always check which application have your camera microphone access uh, i have seen certain gaming applications okay like uh, talking tom and uh, you know some other applications uh, which request call logs okay so imagine uh, think twice why a gaming applications should have access to your call logs right it's not a necessary right i can understand okay the gaming application like talking tom and uh, this they require microphone access for the functionality but why call logs right so these things should be uh, you know uh, thought before you uh, you know give permissions and one more thing is that when you download a, a particular application make sure you are downloading from a proper legitimate source okay i have seen uh, people downloading gb whatsapp to change the background why you need gb whatsapp because it's actually a malicious thing whatsapp is from uh you know meta meta uh, before it's known as facebook right so currently meta is the one which handles facebook instagram and whatsapp so make sure you're downloading from meta inc right so when you download from google play store so just below the application name there will be the developers or uh, the organization's name uh, in the uh, page so make sure you're downloading from the legitimate application okay <clears throat> so uh, now the future of digital privacy so, so there is something called quantum computing okay i don't know how many of you heard about that so quantum computing has the processing power very high processing power right so say for example uh, when you communicate to a uh, you know i have uh, i told uh, you know uh, whatsapp is using end to end communication right uh, end to end encrypted communication so they'll be using some algorithms right end to end encryption uh, algorithms so what happens is that this quantum computing can break that encryption right they can actually uh, decode this particular uh, and uh, actually these type of uh, rise in technology have, there is chance of you know much more higher uh, rights right that uh, comes into the picture uh, of better applications like a uh, uh, that will protect your privacy in the you know, online activities uh, one is uh, on in uh, privacy modes uh, then uh, we have the rise of security and uh, military grade encryption so these things are coming into the picture so challenges ever evolving technology that you no know, new technologies are coming into the picture uh, you know till now we had http uh, version 2 now http version 3 is coming uh, with uh, quick protocol embedded so there is no use of uh, you know uh, there is no need for an additional ssl certificate in this so you will be learning in your in your future uh, classes about http3 and ssl certificate all those things so uh, what i was saying is that you know the uh, technology is rising like anything so there is challenges that new technologies are coming up hackers can misuse that as well
so that should be a balancing act uh, you know uh, like uh, the digital advancements should not uh, you know interfere in the privacy of an individual the government can uh, you know track uh, for uh, nations national security but there is a limit that they can uh, you know uh, uh, involve in the privacy of a user so these things should be a balancing act then uh, you know we should be uh, making public aware of uh, you know how to use uh, each and every platforms how to enable security uh, we should be making them aware what is the risk of losing this particular uh, information uh, how to keep their things private you know uh, so these are challenges because the older generations which are uh, who are new to upcoming technologies will not be aware of what they are sharing how they are using the applications so it is our responsibility as a new generation to teach them how we can you know save them from uh, you know save them from uh, uh, you know uh, privacy breaches and attacks okay they sh they should be aware that how to change a password if they have uh, you know identified there is a password uh, breach happened so these things should be uh, our responsibility so uh, then i would i would like to uh, you know introduce a few privacy protection bills so there is gdpr which is actually general data protection uh, regulation uh, which was introduced in the european uh, uh, union uh, this is actually the first uh, uh, of its kind to prevent uh, unauthorized access to individual data so uh, this was actually uh, you know uh, enforceable from may 25 2018 and they have very strict organization that collects and stores your data for various activities i'm a you no know, online store and from my server if your data is false which you can uh, you know uh, go to uh, and uh, read more rights of the individual so the individuals uh, have to know how the data is get processed the right to information then right to to facebook have we find up to 4% of their annual global turnover it's a huge uh, uh, you know uh, company you no know, they have to pay millions and billions right so uh, so gdpr is applying uh, mostly into the european union now what happens is that we came up with uh, our own uh, rule that is pdpb okay this has been passed very recently in august uh, 7th uh, 2023 uh, so it has been passed it is yet to get uh, you know uh, in the paper so what happens is that once this is implemented we will also have something like a gdpr right so we have categories of data like uh, personal data then sensitive personal data then critical personal data so this has to be uh, this has been categorized and each and every data should be handled in a very specific way okay so this is personal data protection bill of india so some key principles i don't want to go through entire uh, you know uh, thing because uh, you will have you will be learning a lot of things in the upcoming uh, sessions you can have this copy from uh, uh, santanishna ma'am so that you can understand what is pdpb and uh, you know what are the principles and uh, you know limitations all these things so <clears throat> i'll go through some key points so right to access and correction like gdpr it uh, it allows the individuals to access their data and make corrections then right to portability I have the right uh, you know they can actually take the data and transfer it to some other uh, uh, you know uh, platform as well then right to be forgotten it allows the uh, you know individual to request the platform to erase or you know delete the particular information of their uh, account some other features uh, include you know the penalties you know they have high penalties if i violate the privacy of the user okay so there is something called dp uh, dpb that is uh, uh, this has been already been uh, passed this is a digital protect uh, digital personal data protection bill this is the previous one which which have been implemented in india rajya sabha has uh, uh, you know passed this particular bill so this is also similar to this and uh, i have also given a link over here where uh, the copy of the dpdb uh, sorry dpdpb uh, bill is actually there you can actually download it from the ministry of uh, uh, electronics and information technology so you can click there and uh, you can download the bill to understand further so now the job opportunities so when privacy is coming to the picture there is a lot of job opportunities that arise so one is data privacy officer uh, which uh, responsible for ensuring that this particular organization 
uh, is processing the personal data of its staffs and uh, you know customers, uh, providers, or whoever is involved in a proper uh, uh, compliant way. So compliance is certain set of rules that the company has to follow to safeguard the uh, security, information security of the uh, organization. Then we have privacy analyst, how the privacy is working, how the data production mechanisms is uh, handling, the data access policies, all those things has been uh, will be analyzed by a privacy analyst. Then privacy counsel. So he's a legal uh, professional. So he will uh, look on uh, you know the legal aspects of collecting and uh, maintaining the data. Then we have privacy engineer. Uh, so he is uh, responsible for uh, giving out solutions to how the privacy uh, should be protected. Then we have data protection manager. Then we have compliance manager. Like the policies and all these things will be regulated and uh, you know uh, devised by this compliance manager. Then we have privacy consultant, data protection auditor. Then a privacy policy drafter. Uh, you know GDPR consultant. So GDPR consultant in India, why it is needed is that. Uh, say for example, uh, India has a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, service providing companies. You know you have uh, uh, you know telecom in, uh, you know telecom industry that is there in India. So there is telecalling industry that is available in India. You know uh, customer care that is available in India for foreign countries. So there are projects from European unions which will be uh, you know outsourced to India, right? So they have to follow. Uh, European standards as well. They have to ensure that GDPR is uh, applicable in their entire project activities. So for that, we need GDPR, uh, you know, uh, consultant in India. Then we have data privacy awareness trainer who uh, you know trains and aware, uh, you know, give awareness to the people about uh, data privacy and uh, uh, the solutions as well. So that is about privacy specific. Now because of these. Uh, you know, activities, we have data analyst, uh, analyst that is coming into the picture. Say, for example, due to this implementations of these particular laws, the data that we get will be very limited. Okay. So the uh, data analyst play a key role in, uh, you know, targeting people with specific ads without getting all the details from the, in, uh, you know, in, uh, individuals. Say, for example, I am giving you only very few uh, data. And your company wants to analyze what type of uh, shopper is, uh, you know, this guy. So data analysts play a crucial role over here. So whatever uh, limited data they have, with that they have to come up with a proper, uh, you know, business implementation plans. Then we have ethical hacking and uh, vulnerability assessment. We have to make sure that uh, the applications are not uh, vulnerable so that the attackers can get access and you know steal data that is also a breach of violation so these people will get more job opportunities in the upcoming uh, uh, you know era then we have compliance auditors and information security uh, management service providers isms so they will look after the policies whether everything is implemented uh, including the physical security of the organizations uh, then we have secure development each and every developer will have to go through a secure development platform uh, you know, uh, secure coding, uh, uh, you know, platform. So they will have much more uh, importance in the upcoming era rather than the normal uh, development patterns we follow. Then we have security architect. When the software is getting built upon, we need infrastructure to be secured enough so that attack won't happen when you are building the application. So the data storage, say for example, if you are using a traditional method of storing in a database and there is no proper security implemented, the data the data will be, uh, you know, uh, leaked. So, security architect make sure that the data is stored properly. And then we have encrypted uh, encryption specialist, which uh, you know takes care of the proper encryption algorithms. Then we have the third party service providers like uh, you know, um, uh, password uh, managers. We have IAM, that is identity and access managers. So when you go into the cloud, there are multiple modules we can actually get from third party to provide much more higher services firewalls is a third party service providers like sonic wall hardware firewalls are available so these will come into the so you will get much more better job opportunities so we need to be um, remain vigilant and you know proactive okay we should be you know prevention is better than cure right so we should be active proactive that you know our data is safe okay we should change passwords every time we should be uh, careful not to uh, install, uh, you know, uh, unauthorized, uh, you know, uh, or uh, uh, illegal applications into the uh, devices. 
you should be making sure that the communication that is happening is only through encrypted channels do not use public wifi uh, for uh, you know financial transactions so these things should be taken care by us then educate oneself and our uh, uh, you know uh, uh, previous generations about uh, the risk and uh, how to prevent such attacks you should be making sure uh, they are aware of the privacy uh, you know uh, breaches and how to take care of it right so thank you uh, if you have any questions i would have i'll be you uh, know happy to take that yes i do and here uh, harshita she wants to know about data breaching so uh, she has a question okay so uh, so data breach uh, is nothing but uh, say for example there is an a uh, platform uh, you might have heard about uh, you know uh, multiple platforms we use right linkedin so when the application or the platform gets attacked okay the data that is stored in the particular uh, 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 server will be leaked okay will be taken by the uh, attacker and he will sell that on multiple platforms dark web or i can actually uh, you know publish it to uh, make that particular platform you know go weak so this is actually business attack okay so for example i am a competitor i want to attack your platform and i want to make sure that you know the people think that your platform is insecure i will just attack your platform get the data publish it and uh, you know make, make them uh, defame so that is called defamation and also i can actually get money from selling your credentials right so this is what is called data breach uh, no i hope for uh, that yeah yeah very clear yeah so if you have uh, uh, if you think that your uh, data is breached i'll show you uh, one uh, this thing just a minute uh, i'll share my screen um, so this is actually a website have i been pawned uh, so if you go to this website and enter your email id if any of the particular uh, if any of your uh, email is breached you will get to know in what uh, what uh, particular platform was breached and you can actually you know change your password immediately okay so this is a very good uh, you know uh, uh, platform actually and i'll just put a random uh, uh, email i'll see it was actually in 112 data breaches it was actually pawned okay and found a 38 piece so if you go down uh, you will get to know on what platforms this was actually breached okay one is the 300 web host uh, breach then uh, 123 rf breach in march 2020 then some uh, other separate data breaches so here you will get on where all uh, your data has been available and breached okay so immediately you can change your password accordingly okay so this is actually a very good uh, site for you to check whether your uh, account is you know password is available in public or not okay. any other questions yes yes i did one more question okay sir yeah sir sir what are the basic requirements to practice this sir that of which one attack architect uh sir you are asking what are the basic requirements to uh uh you are asking what are the basic requirement to practice uh, uh, safe regarding uh, best practices yes, you are asking yes sir so the best practices should be change of password and uh, you know make sure that uh, you are using https while entering the password or uh, make sure that you, are, you know uh, joining uh, legitimate sites and uh, so these are some uh, best practices also make sure that uh, you know you are not falling into uh, uh, phishing attacks so phishing attacks what happens is that i will be sending you a malicious link so it will look like uh, you know uh, facebook.com uh, so instead of facebook what i do is that i will be creating a domain on facebook.com so when you see that immediately what you will think is okay this is some right so make sure that uh, instead of going and clicking on links you type that link directly in the browser and uh, you know go to the particular website that is the best practice you can uh, do 
or use of antivirus as well because what happens is that i can also put a malware on your system to collect data okay so these things also will come into the picture so make sure that uh, you know you have an antivirus you have uh, you know uh, a password policy that is called a password policy make uh, you know uh, change passwords uh, frequently to a very uh, you know unique and uh, uh, stronger password don't use uh, you know easy passwords like you know uh, uh, password at 1 2 3 then uh, you know uh, your phone numbers your uh, date of birth all those things your nicknames because your friends knows your nickname right you can you know if, if your friend is a hacker he can just guess it very easily and you know get access to your and don't share your uh, devices with others you know uh, i know that you know we do a lot of things like this because you know he's my friend i can i can give my device okay i accept it but certain things should be personal and uh, you know private for us okay like your devices because uh, uh, i'm not saying that your friend might misuse but he will be installing some other uh, games or you know he might be using it for something else and uh, through that activity uh, you know something hap uh, will happen in your right so make sure that you know certain things you keep it private for you so use uh, proper vpn when connecting so vpns are uh, you know there is kaspersky uh, vpn which is free you can use that when you are communicating uh, over a unsecure network say for example you go to a railway station you connect a wifi there you are doing a banking transaction okay so anyone who is connected can perform an attack on you so use a vpn so that it will be better uh, you know much more safer than the normal environment so these things can be practiced thank you sir thank you sir i would like to call upon ms suraksha second year bsc it to deliver the vote of thanks I would like to thank Mr. Ajit Menon, Senior Project Engineer, CDAC Hyderabad, who has given a lots of information about privacy challenges, law opportunities. I would like like to thank our Vice Principal, who has supported to organize this useful session. I would like to thank HOD faculty members. Who has sincerely organized this session? I would like to thank all the students, those who have benefited through this program. Thank you all. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I just yes. want uh, one. I want to just one more thing. Yes. Uh, so uh, I work in a government organization uh, called CDAC. so we okay. have a platform for you know information security education and awareness it's called icia it is from the ministry there is a lot of activities that is going on in this particular domain like uh, we have awareness resources uh, you know uh, tips that is going every day then there is youtube uh, channels for you know uh, tips and news on cyber sec uh, security so uh, you can actually visit this for you know uh, uh, for better understanding the current uh, scenario and you know resources that is available for uh, cyber security we also give some trainings for free uh, for the students so i think that will be a good plat platform for uh, you people so it is actually called icia information security education and awareness i'll just uh, try to share the link over here icia.gov.in you can share the same in whatsapp also ajit i will share it to the children Are you sure, ma'am? I am also sharing that in uh uh this thing uh, chat box chat over here. Yeah, so you can visit this and also uh you know uh get to know uh you know the activities and you can also participate in some of the uh 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 quiz and uh, you know there are other activities that is coming in. So that is also available. Okay. So there is SSO India uh also uh you can search for Stay Safe Online India. uh so this is uh, having lot of youtube channels as well uh and uh, you know uh, for regular tips and updates on cyber security uh, so you can use make use of these platforms as well for uh, you know staying safe thank you ajit thank you so much amit you are busy shetul i think you have written uh, by today morning from g20 i didn't return my still in uh, delhi yeah you are there in uh, hotel i know that Okay, thank you, Ajit. Thank you so much, and thank it was you. very, very useful in, uh, session for us. And uh, future, we will surely let you know. And I wish you all the very best for your future projects.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.